This level guide is a truly special one for me. Not only is it a guide on R2E1, which as many of you probably already know, I had a vendetta against for a very, very long time, but it's also the last unique level guide I'll be making for months to come. Now, that's not me saying I won't be making level guides for future content, as I do still plan on making guides for alternate rundown 3 levels and so forth, but rather, this was the last rundown I played before I actually started making guides for the game. While incredibly poorly done and outdated as heck, I did make Rundown 3 guides way back then, so any guide I make until the release of Rundown 8 itself will more so just be an updated guide rather than a brand new unique one. So not only are we ending off your journey through Alternate Rundown 2 with this level, but we're also ending off my journey of making guides on levels I never did have the chance to cover back then, because my YouTube channel wasn't really a thing. And naturally, we're going to end it off strong by providing you with the information that you need in order to succeed. So, let's drop right on in. Hello everyone, Professor Scaly here, and welcome to the alternate R2E1 level guide. I know many of you have been waiting for this one for quite a while now, so let's start off like we always do with your recommended loadout. And this time around, I recommend you bring with you a bio tracker, a mine deployer, a seafoam launcher, and then you want a close to mid range sentry, so either a burst sentry or a shotgun sentry. I know, shotgun sentry, of all things in its current state, but I'll explain that in just a moment. So, starting off with the bio tracker, I recommend this because in this level, there are going to be shadow type enemies, there are going to be a decent amount of scouts, there's going to be an arrow alarm you're going to have to deal with, and there's a whole lot of infectious fog which is going to be hindering your sight. So to make all these different situations easier on the team by being able to just give calls as to where enemies are located, being able to tag enemies, especially those shadows and whatnot, we're going to want to have a bio tracker with us. When it comes to the mind to play the seafoam launcher, we'll be using them a lot throughout the entirety of the level. Most of the alarm doors and blood doors we go through, we will be utilizing one if not both of these tools. Although I would say be careful about giving the mind deployer tool refill as the amount you start off with is actually almost enough to deal with the entirety of the level depending on a little bit of RNG. So you can give it a tool refill use here and there, but most of your tool refill should be going into the seafoam launcher as well as the sentry as that will be also getting a lot of utilization. As for the sentry, the reason why I'm recommending close to mid-range sentry is because we want something that can help us deal with the surge alarms in this level, as there are a lot of surge alarms and those are usually the moments where people get killed, as surge alarms can be absolutely brutal. So we don't want to deal with enemies really far away, because if you think about it, surge alarm spawns in a ton of enemies all at once, and if you kill them off pretty much where they spawn with the use of sentries, then those enemies respawn and they don't really have that much ground that they need to cover to get back to where they were right before they died. But if we kill them a whole lot closer to us and our teammates, then they have to respawn two rooms away from us, which in some situations will actually be pretty far away, and then they have to cover that entire distance once over in order to get back in our faces. So having a close to mid-range sentry that we can actually just keep with us and plant down from us every time we're doing a surge alarms full team scan that takes a little while to complete actually helps out a lot. Dropping down into level, you'll see that your main objective is to retrieve the neonate that will always be inside zone 604 and bring it with you to extraction inside zone 607. And you and your team are going to be starting off inside zone 596, a pretty fair distance away. And in here, there's going to be a scout patrolling about, a fair amount of regular strikers and shooters, no resources like meds and ammos, but there will be fog repellers, which you definitely want to get as many as you can, so keep an eye out for the boxes and lockers. And there's also going to be a power cell and a generator that will be tied to the security door to the north to zone 597. So go throughout here, deal with the enemies, grab those fog repellers, look for the power cell, and once you have it, take it down into the infectious fog on the southeastern corner where you'll find that generator. And then once you've done that, you're going to want to have the mind to point the seafoam person go to the western end to the door in the room, and you're going to want to make sure you shut that door, mine it, and seafoam it. And then everybody except for the seafoam person are going to head to the north or into the security door to zone 597. And the reason for this is because this security door has a class 3 surge alarm tied to it. And as you can see the map overlay, there are two different locations enemies can potentially spawn from. So what you're hoping for here, because this is a surge alarm, and surge alarms are pretty difficult, especially when enemies are spawning this close to you, is you're hoping that most, if not all, of the initial enemies from the surge alarm spawn behind that closed door. Because the thing about surge alarms, or at least most of them, is that the first initial full team scan does not appear right next to the door. Rather, it's going to move throughout the room a bit and then appear somewhere else. And in this room in particular, that first full team scan can sometimes take quite a while to actually materialize. So, since you want to buy as much time as you could possibly get, 
You can have the Seafoam person stay near that door, that way if most enemies spawn behind it, they could just sit there and then have a fully charged Seafoam launcher good to go, and once all the initial Seafoam is broken off, you just fully reinforce the door, and by that point, that full team scan should have appeared so you can run over and join your teammates, and then you can just stick with them the entire time as every single scan is going to be a full team scan. As for your sentry, just like most of the surge alarms in this level, I recommend that you take it with you and when you're dealing with a full team scan, place it down in front of you in the general direction enemies will be coming from. That way you have a little bit of extra firepower and you don't get completely overwhelmed by the large amount of enemies. Uh, work on the scans, deal with the enemies, once all that's done you can go over and pick up your sentry if you don't have it on hand, and then once you're sure that there are no enemies left alive, you can open up the security door and head to zone 597. In there, there are going to be two scouts patrolling about, even more regular strikers and shooters, and there will be some resources. So go through here, deal with the enemies, grab those resources and resupply, and then you're going to want to hop onto the terminal in the northwest corner of the room and use it to check zone 598 and 599 for a power cell and a fog turbine. Because as far as I'm aware, in most of your runs, both of those zones will have a fog turbine each, but only one of those two zones will actually have a power cell in it. So you want to head into the zone that has both a power cell and the fog turbine. The thing is though, both of these security doors are blood doors, and all the enemies that spawn in from the blood door itself is going to be a shadow type enemy. And then the enemies that are naturally sleeping in these two side zones consist of regular strikers and shooters, as well as small shadows and even shadow giants. There's also a single scout in both of these zones, so hopefully that scout is not right on the other side of the blood door. If so, just shoot it as the door is opening up and you should be okay. But go over to the door that you need to, place a mine on it, open it up. Bio tracker person, probably don't tag the enemies until after the mine explodes, that way you have the most amount of time to shoot at those enemies before the tags disappear, as bio tracker tags disappear pretty quickly on regular shadows, and just deal with all the enemies in the first room. Then once you've done that, you head to the zone, make your way into the second room, and I would recommend you kill every single one of the enemies in the second room as well. You can either do it by sneakily hammering them or stabbing them or whatever your melee weapon is, or if there's a ton of shadow giants, you could just kill all the small boys and then just go guns crazy on the big ones if you don't want to risk meleeing them. But once you clear out the entirety of the first room and the second room, you could just sneak your way through the other few rooms that way you're not spending a ton of ammo or losing health to the enemies. And you're just going to look around. There are going to be a lot of resources in these two side zones, so make sure you get all the resources in the one you went into. And keep an eye out for the power cell and the fog turbine. And once you have literally everything from the zone, head back into zone 597, take the fog turbine as well as the power cell to the northern end, climb down the ladder, and down there you'll be able to find the generator you could plug your power cell into, as well as the security door to zone 600. The thing is though, that security door has a class 4 surge alarm tied to it, so we need to set up some defenses. As you can see the map overlay, there are a few different small locations for enemies, there are two of them down south, and then there will be one to the west or to the east, depending on which one of the two blood doors you had to open up. So what I recommend you do is, as you see, I've got some doors labeled that you want to make sure you shut, mine, and sea foam, but there are some doors you're just going to simply want to shut and sea foam. Specifically, these two doors right here, actually. You want to see from them, but you do not want to mine them. And the reason for that is because those are small doors. And the thing is, placing a mine on a small door, while it's going to kill some enemies, it's not going to kill a whole lot because there's not much surface area for the enemies to pile up against it. And because this is a surge alarm, once a few enemies die, they are almost immediately replaced by new enemies that spawn in, and they're going to be spawning in pretty close to the door. So only killing off a few enemies with a mine really isn't all that worth it. So set those doors how you need to, as for your sentry, you can either hold on to it and just place it in front of you while you work on the scans, or if you want to, you could place it near the security door to the west or to the east, depending on which one you opened up. Enemies who come down from the south, they have to travel such a long distance to get to you that you don't really need to worry about having a lot of defenses set up down there. But once you got everything set up how you want to, hold the door, get to work on the scans, do be a bit careful because during this surge alarm, not only will you get regular strikers, but you also can get hybrids, and it seems like you'll get a decent amount of them in your average run, so be very careful that they do not just obliterate your entire team's HP. But once you finish every single one of the scans, deal with any of the enemies that are still left alive, then you could go out and pack up any of your mines that did not go off, as well as your sentry, and then you can grab the fog turbine, head down the ladder, and head into zone 600. Upon entering into zone 600, a temporary blackout is going to occur, but this is just going to last a few seconds, so don't worry too much about it. In here, there are going to be two scouts, as well as a fair amount of regular strikers and shooters, and even potentially some giant strikers and or hybrids. So make your way through, deal with the enemies bit by bit. Most of the zone is covered in infectious fog, so you will have to hug that fog turbine person. So bio tracker, make sure you're giving call-outs to your teammates so you know where stuff is and you're tagging those scouts. And as you make your way through, deal with all the enemies, you can keep an eye out for resources as there will be more of them down here. And there's also going to be a power cell. And you're going to want to make sure that when you get that power cell, you plug it into the generator on the northern end of the zone and not the southern one. And the reason for that is because even though we will be going into both the locations that these generators can unlock, 
we want to do the one with the alarm tied to it first, which is the northern one. So once you deal with all of your business down here, you can start setting up your defenses. And just like you can see with this map overlay, there are two possible spawn locations for enemies, the one down south and then either to the west or to the east, depending on which one of the two blood doors you actually opened up. And the nice thing about this alarm is that every single enemy has to jump down that ladder we went down earlier in order to get into our room, which gives us the perfect opportunity to set up a really nice choke point. So your defenses, you're not going to be using mines whatsoever, but you will be using a lot of seafoam as you're going to be spraying it all over the floor near the base of that ladder. And I do mean a lot. Feel free to use 60 or even 80% of the seafoam launcher if you can afford that. And then just have your sentry in that room facing directly towards the ladder. That way when an enemy spawns in and jumps down that ladder, it gets stuck due to the seafoam and then the sentry makes really easy quick work of it. Then the next enemy jumps down the ladder, the sentry makes quick work of it. And this will just go on for quite a while, making it that you can do the first few sets of scans in this alarm without any enemies showing up whatsoever. So get that set up, then quickly go to the northern end, activate the alarm, get to work on the scans. Once enemies do start getting into the room, you can start throwing fog repellers a little bit, that way you can more easily see these enemies, or you could just simply hug the fog turbine person and rely on the bio tracker. And once you dealt with all the scans and every single one of the enemies, you could go back, pick up your sentry, and then open up the security door to zone 603. In there, there aren't going to be any enemies whatsoever, but there will be resources as well as a power cell that you're going to want to make sure you keep your eye out for. And once you grab all that, you can make your way to the northern end. You do have to go down below in the infectious fog, so make sure you bring in the fog turbine with you. And at the far northern end, you will find the security door to zone 604, and in there will be your HSU neonate that you need for your main objective. The thing is though, this security door does have an alarm tied to it, but thankfully it's not a surge alarm. It's just a regular class four alarm door. And as you can see at the map overlay, there's only one spawn location for enemies. Ignore that area off to the east. When I was collecting these map overlays, I accidentally did things out of order. So I had to open up that zone before I went up north. So that zone at this point should not be open for you. So it's just the one spawn point down to the south, which is really nice because enemies are spawning very, very far away from you. So you're not going to use mines or seafoam whatsoever during this alarm. And heck, if you don't even want to, you don't have to use your sentry. If you want to hold on to it and just preserve the tour refill, by all means, go on ahead. Or if you want to use it, that we have a little bit of a split between tour refill usage and ammo usage during this alarm, you could place your sentry near the entrance into your room and call it good. The other thing about this alarm that you want to be careful of is that along with the regular strikers and shooters, there will be a good amount of hybrids that spawn in. So be very cautious of them as this is a pretty wide open room and the hybrids can shred through you very quickly. Uh, get the scans done, deal with the enemies, and then once all that's good, you can open up the security door and head to zone 604. In there, you will only ever find the HSU neonate you need for the main objective, as well as a box or a locker that will have a colored key card in it, which you're going to need in order to unlock zone 602, which will eventually lead you to where your extraction scan is. So get the neonate, get that key card, go back out, grab the fog turbine, the power cell, grab any resources that are still left inside zone 603, and then head back into zone 600. In there, you can use the terminal in the middle of the room to double check all those zones you went through to see if there are any resources you missed, especially 603 as there is not actually a terminal in there. And then once you have everything you could get from these zones, you can head to the western side of zone 600, drop the neonate over there, and then your team has a decision to make. At this point, you are about to go into the final stretch of the level, but when you open up that security door to zone 602 to the west, you have to deal with an error alarm, which is a pretty difficult thing in this level due to how the rest of the level is designed. So if you feel like you don't have quite the amount of resources you need in order to have a good chance of survival, you might want to take a slight detour and go to the eastern side to that security door to zone 601, as in there, there are going to be a ton of resources. But if you feel like you have more than enough, or maybe you're just short on time and you can't afford to spend extra 10, 15, or 20 minutes to collect resources, then you're just going to simply put the key card into that security door, activate the scan, and get moving on further into the level. But of course, this is a level guide, so we need to talk about everything. So for those of us who want to go into zone 601, we're just leaving the neonate by the door. Then we're going to take the fog turbine and the power cell, go to the southern end of the zone, plug that into a generator, and then go to the eastern side to the security door to zone 601, which is now unlocked. The security door though is going to be a blood door and just like the ones earlier it is going to spawn in nothing but shadow type enemies and inside of zone 601 you can expect to see regular strikers and shooters as well as shadow strikers and shadow giants so there might be a few of those inside that first room so what you could do is place a mine on the blood door and then open it up if you want to you could fight right there or if you want to fight out of the fog you could quickly make your way to the north or to the south and just have the enemies chase after you and deal with them up above but once you dealt with every single one of the enemies you can head inside Although something you want to take note of is upon opening up that security door to zone 601, or shortly afterwards I should say, 
a blackout is going to occur. And this blackout is going to affect the entirety of the level. However, once you open up the security door to zone 602 to the west with that air alarm tied to it, the lights will come back on. So this is really only going to affect you right here now while you're going through that zone 601. And if anything, it actually sort of helps you out a bit as it's easier to see shadow type enemies in pitch black darkness than in a somewhat well lit room. So this actually can make it a little bit easier for some people. But you're going to want to clear all the enemies inside the first room of 601 and then the two rooms are tied to the first room because you don't want any of those enemies potentially getting dragged in when you do activate the air alarm as enemies could spawn from over here. And then you can use the terminal in the first room to ping the exact location of every single resource in the zone. And if you want to, you can just sneak your way through. The other thing too is inside zone 601 there is a power cell and you're going to want to make sure you grab this and bring it with you as you're going to need three more power cells for the rest of the level. And every single one of the zones you head into will have a power cell in each of them, but one of those three zones you have to go through is really big and you really don't want to actually have to look around for that power cell. So grabbing the one from in here can save you quite a bit of time. But once you have the power cell and all the resources and everything you need from in here, head back into zone 600, go to the western side to the air alarm door and get ready for the final stretch of the level. So when it comes to this error alarm, it's going to be spawning in three regular enemies roughly every 30 seconds. However, unlike pretty much any other error alarm in the existence of this game, the longer you're in the level for it, the more it punishes you. Because every four minutes that pass by, it will add in an additional enemy to that wave. So for the first four minutes, it's just three enemies every 30 seconds. But from minute four to minute eight, you have to deal with four enemies every 30 seconds. And this will keep on increasing by one every four minutes until you get 10 enemies per wave, which will happen at the 28 minute mark. At that point, you don't have to worry about any more enemies being added in, so you'll never get 11 every 30 seconds. But even then, dealing with 10 enemies every 30 seconds is incredibly taxing on your resources. So at this point on, you need to be very fast and efficient in what you do, and you cannot just twiddle your thumbs and just sort of mosey around. Otherwise, it is going to hurt you tremendously in the long run. So once you activate that security door, you do the scan, you're going to head into zone 602. A lot of enemies can be in that first room. So if there are a ton of coins to the bio tracker, just simply pull it and let them come to you. If not, you can just make your way through with the fog turbine. Keep in mind that you are having somebody carry a fog turbine, somebody's carrying a neonate, and somebody's carrying a power cell. So ideally, the person who shouldn't be carrying anything is the bio tracker. But this means that if you wake up a room with a fair amount of enemies or the air alarm is about to catch up to you, might be a good idea to drop your things and help out real quick. But you're going to make your way through zone 602. You're just going to head to the western side of it. If you see boxes or lockers along the way, by all means, open them up. You can get all the resources you possibly want. Just don't take too much time looking around trying to find them. If you happen to come across a power cell in this zone, by all means, grab it as well. If not, no big deal. You technically don't need it to beat the level as long as you grab the two from the upcoming zones. So make your way through and once you get to the western side of it, you'll get into a room with a terminal. And when you get in here, you want to slow down just slightly. And reason for that is because you're about to approach an alarm door. And some of the doors up ahead are absolutely crucial for it as that alarm door is going to be a surge alarm. So when we get into this room, we want to wait for a wave of enemies to spawn in. And once we hear it spawn in or the bio tracker person says, hey, I'm hearing pings off in the distance, stuff spawned in. You're going to open up that western door, go in, and you're just going to bum rush these rooms. If there's a lot of enemies in them, I highly recommend just drop the neonate and drop the power cell. Just have the fog turbine and then everybody else is free to melee or shoot and just make your way through the rooms go north a little bit go west get up that ladder open up that door and then once you get into that room open up the door to the right of you and the door directly in front of you as these are the three crucial doors for that alarm if you can get all these open it'll make the upcoming alarm a whole lot easier but you do need to be careful as you did just open up and go through a lot of rooms so you might have a lot of enemies all coming after you at once so if need be throw down some fog repellers plop down your sentry and get ready to defend Deal with the enemies, and once every single one of them is dead and you're just back to dealing with the air alarm enemies, you can backtrack to grab the power cell and the neonate if you did leave them behind, bring them in with you, and then head into that final big room of zone 602. In here, about halfway through on the right side, down below in the infectious fog, you'll be able to find that generator, so plug your power cell into it. Then you can go to the northern end, near the security door, and leave the neonate there, and then you could quickly look around the room for boxes and lockers to get some more resources. Then once you've dealt with that, you're going to want to start setting up your defenses as the security door to zone 605 at the northern end does have a class 3 surge alarm tied to it. And as you can see at the map overlay, there are two different locations enemies can spawn from. So what you're going to want to do is have one person with the fog turbine at the northern end next to that security door, while the other three people, ideally the mine deployer, the bio tracker, and the seafoam launcher person, are standing near that big door you left open, and you're going to have a fog repeller or two there that way you can actually see what you're doing and not gain a ton of infection. 
Then what you're going to want to do is wait for an arrow wave to spawn in, let them come to you, kill them incredibly quickly, then run out, shut the door and sea foam it to the left, shut the door to the right of you and sea foam that one, then come back into the room. And as you come back in, the person on the northern end activates the alarm door and then you shut the big door that leads into your room, mine it, sea foam in real quick, and assume you got every single one of those doors shut and sea foamed and none of them got broken down early because of the air alarm enemies, you're all just going to run over and join your teammates for the full team scan once it finally appears. If that's not the case though, and maybe one or both of the outer doors got broken and you only have the one that leads directly into your room, Seafoam person, you're going to stay here a little bit and do the same thing you did for the very first search alarm in the level and just wait for the full team scan to appear. And once it appears, you're going to fully reinforce that door with one last full charge of Seafoam Watcher and then run over to your teammates to buy your team as much time as you can. As for the sentry, just like before, plop down in front of you while you're working on the scans. And once you get every single one of them done, just go back to the north and end, wait for the search alarm enemies to get to you, deal with every single one of them. And once you're back to just dealing with air alarm enemies, you're going to want to wait for a wave to spawn in. And once you wave spawns in, you deal with them, you're going to want to open up that door and get into zone 605. And you need to make quick work in here as well, because inside the zone, there are going to be a fair amount of enemies as well as a scout patrolling about. And it's all just one big room. So maybe have two people who stay slightly outside and just defend against the air alarm enemies while some people go inside and deal with that scout ASAP. Keep in mind, if you shoot outside, you will not wake up all of zone 605, but you will wake up anything near the door. So depending on how the enemy spawn locations are there, you're going to have to adapt on the fly. But if you pull it off well, you can get rid of the scout and then your teammates can come in. And even if you have to go guns crazy, you can just work together, deal with everything inside zone 605. And once everything in here is dead, you're going to have two people go to the southern end to that security door and defend. So probably the bio tracker person and maybe the sentry person. And they're going to defend against the air alarm enemies while the other two people go throughout this entire zone. Look for the resources, grab them, resupply the team as quickly as you can because that air alarm is still getting harder and harder. You can resupply and then you're also going to look for the power cell in the zone. Once you find it, take it over to the security door nearby to the east of it a little bit. I believe there is that generator, plug that in, and that will unlock the security door to zone 606. This security door is just a full team scan, so you can pull the scan whenever you want, but you don't want to all move over there yet until you have completely grabbed every single one of the resources from in here and resupplied fully. But once you're good, you can just leave the fog turbine behind as you don't need it from this point on. Just grab the neonate. If you did happen to get that extra power cell from earlier, grab that too. Go over, do the full team scan, and then same thing as before. Wait for an air alarm wave to get to you, deal with them, and as you're dealing with them, open up the security door to zone 606. Because at the end of it, you'll find that security door to 607, but that's going to have another surge alarm tied to it. So you need to make sure that for that final surge alarm, you preserve some doors, that way it's not 10 times harder than it needs to be. So wait for an air alarm wave to get to you, deal with them, and as you deal, open up the door, because enemies are spawned so far away from you, that around the time that wave actually gets to you, the next wave should have just spawned in. And you're going to have two people who are going to primarily focus on rushing to the north end of the zone and getting doors open, while the other two people are dealing with the air alarm enemies, as well as any the enemies are in the zone that might get woken up either due to gunshots or due to a teammate running right past it. So try to keep them safe. They're going to make your way through. You're going to open up the first northern door, then make your way through, open up the second northern door. And once you open up that second big one, you go in and then there's a small door to the right of you down a five stairs. You got to get that open. And there's a big door to the left of you up against the wall that you have to get that one open. Once all these are open, just like before, you have a lot of areas open. So potentially a lot of enemies coming after you all at once. If those northern enemies haven't woken up, maybe fall back a bit and then deal with the air alarm enemies and southern enemies. Then go in and deal with the northern enemies. And once this entire zone has been cleared out, you're going to want to defend near that first big door that you left open. Grab resources, resupply best you can. Bring up the neonate if you haven't already, and then also look for the power cell on the zone. Once you find it, take it over to the security door just north of that. That will be the generator, so plug that in. And then you're going to want to start setting up your defenses for the final alarm, which as you can see on this map overlay, there's only one possible spawn location for enemies, and these three doors are crucial for it. What you're going to want to do is stay near this door here, wait for an air wave to spawn in, and while you're waiting, you're going to want to shut this door here, mine it, and sea foam it. And then you're going to want to make sure that you sea foam it, not on the side where you'll be defending, so not on the northern end, but on the southern end on the staircase leading to it. Because as long as both of the northern doors are kept shut, enemies are going to go for that one on the right. So if you sea foam all over the staircase, it will delay the enemies and make it take a little bit longer for them to get to the door. And once you got that set up, you wait for a wave to spawn in. Once an air wave spawns in, deal with them. And then as soon as you dealt them, quickly shut that big door, mine it, sea foam it, and then run over to the west, go through that door, shut behind you, and then have somebody ideally on the door already who can activate the alarm. That way the first full team scan will move out and your team can focus on that. 
Once you finish that full team scan, the person on the Seafoam Watcher, you need to quickly run over to that small door that you mined and Seafoamed, and you're just going to keep reapplying Seafoam. Because the nice thing about this final surge alarm is that's not just full team scans. It's one full team scan and then two sets of cluster scans. So your teammates can work on the cluster scans while you keep that door shut for as long as you possibly can. And once they finish it, they can open up the security door, take the neonate and head into zone 607 and get on the extraction scan while you just keep that door seafoam for as long as you possibly can. Once you're out of seafoam, you just run over to your teammates and help defend. As this extraction scan is going to be a bit of a long one and it's going to cause even more enemies to spawn in on top of the air alarm enemies, but as long as you were able to even get into that room and not have enemies around your heel, you should be able to hold out. You just sit there a little bit with a sentry, shoot the enemies as they come to you, and once you get that scan up to 100%, you are done and you have finally beaten alternate R2E1. And that's all there really is to it. Alternate R2E1 is still a brutal level even with all the changes made to it. Then again, what were you expecting? It is an E tier mission and the original had less than a 1% success rate. Now granted, there were far fewer people playing the game back then and the average skill level was a whole lot worse than what it is currently, but it is still a factual statistic. It is, I believe, the only level in the history of this game that had less than a 1% survival rate. And all things considered, I do quite enjoy this version of R2E1, as the ending of the level isn't quite as RNG heavy as it was before. And that was one of my big complaints about the original, just you would have maybe an hour of prep time getting to it and doing all that stuff which wasn't really too difficult as the first half was pretty easy to beat even back then, and then you just have this 10-15 minute portion that was very, very RNG heavy. So it was really nice to see 10 Chambers make changes to that, as well as other parts of the level, based off of a lot of the extensive criticism that it received all those years ago. As always though, thank you for watching this video all the way to the very end. I do hope that it was able to provide you with some assistance in beating this level. If you have any tips or tricks this level that you want to share, any questions for me, or you just have something in general that you want to say, please do let me know down in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and if you want to join the community I'm building, there's a link to my Discord down in the description, as well as some other links. Among those links being one that'll take you to the official GTFO merch store, which, as always, I highly recommend you check it out if you're a fellow GTFO enthusiast. And until next time, congratulations to all of those of you who have completed all of Alternate Rundown 2, and good luck to those of you who are still fighting the good fight. Thankfully, you don't have to worry about a time limit, so it might take you a while, but I'm sure at some point you'll finally beat every single one of those levels. And hopefully, as always, I'll see you all in the next video.